to um, a general debate, and the first speaker is Jeanette Arnold. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I've just got a, a number of questions. Um, firstly, it goes back to what John was talking about, about uh, the people legacy. Um, now, the Olympic Park um, set itself as benchmarks, as you know, Margaret, and um, uh, I, I know that you've been aware of the programs they've uh, implemented. Um, and then the sadness is, is that those teams may now, well, disperse. And I welcome what you're doing with uh, schools, but do you, would you agree with me that you need also to work with local colleges in the way that the ODA did? And in a sense, what you need to do is take the baton and do the second leg. Uh, and why I say this, um, they, uh, were, uh, they, they missed their mark in terms of women into construction, which is a critical um, benchmark. Uh, they were able to achieve uh, some good numbers with BME from the host boroughs. And uh, also, 80% um, of people when asked said that they felt that they were earning the London living wage. So will you put on record your commitment to look to 100% of all staff uh, within your purview earning the living wage? And ha uh, will you be committed to ensuring local employment and that given that the population comes from a diverse BME community, and of course that includes people with disability, that you will be looking to achieve benchmarks? Yes, I mean, I think I'll start and then Andy knows more about the detail of this. What we're trying to do, Jeanette, is make sure that as the ODA kind of winds down, as it were, and it's winding down fairly quickly, we don't lose any of that accumulated kind of skills and experience and knowledge, particularly in these areas, because it's difficult to replicate that and you can spend a lot of time reinventing the wheel. ODA have some fantastic staff in that area. And if I had a magic wand and we had resources available, I would ideally like those teams to come over to our organisation and until we understand what our settlement is, um, our financial settlement is, we're not in a position to do that. But even if it's not the staff, what we have been working with the UOD on, I had a session on this just recently, is making sure that all of that know-how, all of those connections and all of the systems and the processes that the UOD have painstakingly built up in this area are not lost, but we, we are able to import those into our organisation so that we can really carry on all of that work. But we're also separately working with the virus to see what else can we do. I mean, the great news in one sense is, I mean, this is a 20-year a project, but that's 20 years of work in the park, if you want to look at it that way, across all of the venues, across all of the landscaping, across, you know, potentially horticulture, certainly in construction, all of that, so there should be a generation's work opportunities, apprenticeship opportunities, right on our doorstep in the park, and we have to make sure that we don't lose any opportunity in the communities that we serve there to make sure that we pick up on all of that. Okay. So okay. it's really important to me that, that we don't lose that knowledge from the OD or indeed from the LDA team who did a huge amount of good work, particularly in, with small businesses in that area. Okay, and I wonder if I could get Andrew's comments later when I write to you, because I want to go on to the media centre. Um, I don't know if you're aware of the, um, the, 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 the not gossip, but um, the concerns and the different uh, speculations surrounding the use of the media centre. Uh, I was hearing that um, rather than a media centre, we might have a, uh, a snowmack, an Acer snowmack, which is this huge um, mega indoor ski resort in East London. So um, I also heard about Bollywood in, the, uh, in Europe. I mean, how firm um, um, are, are the interests from the media companies in taking over the media centre? Uh, is it strong firm, weak firm? I mean, are we going to have a media centre in this location? Yeah. Well, let me say, as Margaret said earlier, a uh, media centre uh, is one of the more challenging, uh, I think, um, legacies uh, to uh, because of the scale of it. There are two things, just to be clear, on the media centre. There's the the press centre, which is about a 250,000 square foot, but will essentially be an office building. Um, you know, good quality, very well done, and that's where the print journalists are during games. And then there's the broadcast centre, 
which is about 650,000 square feet roughly of you know, what is a very large space with six studios per floor over two floors, um, which is very much more of a, almost like a very large shed-like structure, to put it honestly. Um, we went out for, uh, to test the market on expressions for uh, interest um, to see uh, what kind of possibilities. That's why you're hearing about different ideas. Um, we didn't discourage ideas at this phase, but what we were clear about is we did want to make every effort possible to see if we could achieve the vision that we know Hackney has had and others have had for a creative yes. center at that part, the northwest part of the park, and that we were committed to making every effort we could to solicit those interests. But on the other hand, we did not want to, you know, exclude other possibilities because at the end of the day these are two very large buildings it's a part of the park and we had to see what other offers might be there our overriding issue of course and, and, and you know is uh, generating employment on the park I mean as you know this is the significant most of the park uh, that was within our ownership um, is residential this is the key employment part of the park and that's very important to us um, in how we evaluate this we're just at the expressions for interest phase, so there is no decision being made about a snowmack or about any other use you may hear about. It was truly almost, let's get the ideas, and then we'll take it to the next phase. Um, as I said, one of the key things to make this work will be having an anchor. Um, because it's a large building, it is looking to get anchors. Um, uh, Obviously, we would love to have a media anchor there or a research anchor or something of that exactly. nature, a scientific anchor that could take part of that building, um, and we're still working very hard to try to achieve that. Um, and uh, and uh, we've had some interest, um, but uh, it's early. Okay. And, and lastly, can I, it, it would be remiss of me not to bring this up, can I ask what discussions have you had with the leader of Alton Forest and the chair of Late Norient? Football Club following your decision to award the Olympic Stadium to West Ham United. I, I raise this because, again, it's a, a matter of concern for uh, that locality. Um, and I understand that um, there's a, a popular feel that uh, the new 15,000 um, stadia um, at Eton Manor, uh, which you're planning to put hockey in, would be better used if late Orient were given an option on that site. No, just to be just to be clear, Jeanette, um, the chairman of Leighton Orient, I don't I don't think is quite clear about the legacy use for Eaton Manor. That you'll all be aware that in terms of the planning consent, there is an obligation to deliver a certain quantum of metropolitan open land in the park. That north part of the park is part of that and it also is in the ownership of Lee Valley Regional Park Authority. It's not in our ownership. Uh, the, the hockey complex will be reconfigured in legacy, and there's no question of a stadium, hockey stadium, being left there. It becomes tennis. Is that right? Have I got that well, right? Um, I think well, I've just got that wrong. Hang on. Yeah. No, it's, I mean, I think two things. One but is that... It's not a 50,000. Yeah. The key thing is there isn't a 50,000 stadium 15. Being, being left there. 15. <laughs> It gets decontaminated right now, currently, and that part of the park where it's proposed, the northwest part of the park, is to return to as part of the open space requirement, and that stadium gets de deconstructed. Whether they're in discussions with Lee Valley or Eaton Manor, that's a separate separate matter from us. That's I personally think it's inconceivable so. that you would put two football stadia in the Olympic Park. I mean, this is much needed open space, recreational, and you know, employment space and housing. And I made that point to the chairman of Leighton Orient when we wrote to him. This isn't kind of like land that's up for grabs, it's not, it's not earmarked for anything else. It's very clearly earmarked in the master plan for those purposes. Okay, thank you for putting that in the public domain.